Welcome back for another episode of the Trans Atheist with Ariane and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the Trans Atheist. Today we're going to be talking about the recent controversy with Bud Light and the CMT Music Awards and kind of looking at what's going on out there on social media and um, how it intersects with this whole religious bigotry integrating into Republican politics. So stick around for a really quick snippet and then we'll respond. Well, <laughs> looks like uh, we done broke the internet. Um, I never thought it'd blow up like this, but I'm sure glad it has because I'm over this woke agenda, completely over it. I'm done with it. And listen, I don't hate anybody. I don't wish anybody any harm. If you want to dress like a clown in the privacy of your own home, like, you know, whatever. I don't care if you dress like a sea monkey and prance around and think that's what you are. By all means, do that. But when you bring it out in public and you're shoving it down my throat and on our kids, no, that's where I draw the line. I'm not going to tolerate you forcing it down our throats and on our kids like it's okay, like it's normal. Man, piss okay, off. Okay, so I edited it's that not TikTok normal. video to kind of get to the pertinent points. And in full disclosure, I have no idea who this person is. Um, I honestly had never heard of them prior to this, discovered it in the process of doing the video. And it's not even just about them. It's about the concepts that they're putting out there, which are not uncommon to this new... Uh, this current Republican ideology um, that's kind of intermixed with religious hatred. So the first thing he talks about is, you know, he doesn't care and he doesn't hate anyone and talks about loving people. Well, you know, first of all, love is an action. First, And, and I'm not even saying that you should, quote, love everyone. We should respect each other's right to existence. That doesn't mean we have to love everyone. I do not love this gentleman. Not going to pretend that I do. I find him despicable. I respect his right to exist. That is vastly different. Um, now, talking about crossing a line and shoving it down their throat. This is a language that I hear a lot, honestly, from bigots, that it's being shoved down their throat and we're crossing a line. Let me first say, as far as your line goes, I honestly don't give a shit about your line. Um, you don't get to draw lines for my life. Shoving it down your throat. So, there's a conflation here in the video between drag and people being trans. Uh, they conflate this many times like it's the same thing. It is not. Drag is a costume and a performance. Trans is an identity and who we are. I don't put on women's clothes to perform, you know, to, as a, as a, to a way to make a living. Um, this is who I am 24 seven. Um, you know, most there, it, there can be some, you know, trans people who are drag queens or kings. Um, and that's fine. Everyone gets to decide what they feel is best for them. But the vast majority of drag queens are cisgender gay men. They don't identify as women. It's a character that they've created. However, um, people can dress however they want, um, wherever they want. I mean, you talk about a drag queen and this is indecent. Have we looked at these performances? The performances in most cases, almost any case I've seen, but they're wearing considerably more than you would ever see on a public beach, but you don't see the same people trying to say that public beaches, you know, that the beachgoers should be fined or put in prison because they're displaying inappropriate material around minors. No, that's perfectly acceptable unless the person is not following a gender stereotype.
And that kind of brings us into this most recent controversy with, like, Kid Rock and Travis Tritt. And now I think John Rich or whatever from Big and Rich has gotten into it as well about Budweiser because Budweiser made a can that they gave to Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan Mulvaney is a trans TikToker and an influencer. Um, in full disclosure, I'm not a huge fan of Dylan Mulvaney's videos. Not because I have something against her. Perfectly support her. I'm glad that she's out there doing what she feels she need to, needs to do. The videos are just not my particular style and not something that I enjoy. Um, but, um, in a lot of cases, these people are saying, let's boycott Budweiser because Budweiser dared to even acknowledge that a trans person existed. Um, that's, that's another aspect of this that we'll see. And then it kind of goes on with um, CMT Music Awards. Um, there was an artist named uh, Kelsey Ballerini who had um, a, bunch, a, a group of drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race come up on stage and perform with her. And you're going to see a video where he kind of reacts to that as well. And, well, the reaction is probably what you would expect. Well, I see they've uh, taken down one of my videos I posted a while ago, just a few minutes ago. And I didn't say anything bad. Didn't say anything anything wrong. All I was saying is, just keep, if you want to dress like a clown, do it in the privacy of your own home. Don't bring it out to public and expect me to live in your reality. Because it just ain't normal and it just ain't right. You know? And, and for CMT Music Awards, to have them on their show dress like clowns, Kelsey bringing them up. And after... They done had what happened in Nashville, and we all know what, we're ta what I'm talking about. That was like a slap in the face. Okay, so you noticed in that clip he talked about Kelsey Ballerini from the CMT Music Awards bringing on the drag queens. He repeatedly refers to them as dressed like clowns. I think if you look at the video, um, you know, there are different types of um, drag personas and, um, you know, drag makeup styles, etc., I think calling these drag queens saying that they were dressing like a clown is a bit extreme. But then he connects that to, quote, what happened in Nashville recently. And saying that it was inappropriate for her to do that because of what happened in Nashville recently. So first, we probably need to explain in case you aren't aware. You probably are. But if you aren't aware of what happened in Nashville, a religious school was recently shot up. Um, several people, including students, died. The person that shot up the school was a former student. And from all reports, this student appears to have been a trans male. Now, I want to clarify on language because this was very much so misreported in the news because of the fact that news media and right-wing politicians and right-wing advocates um, do not accept people's gender identity for who they are. Um, it made for some confusion. So the person who appears to have done this, this shooting was a trans man, meaning that they were assigned female at birth and transitioned into a masculine form as a trans man. Now, we would refer to that knowing that is a trans man. Trans describes how the person got there. Man describes the identity of the person in their current form. So, a trans woman is a trans person who was assigned male at birth and transitioned into woman a trans man is a one is a person who was assigned female at birth and transitioned into a man. The news media kind of confused this because their reports was this was a quote transgender female. So for those of us reading it, thinking of it from the perspective of how 
we use language, there was a misunderstanding that this was a person assigned male at birth who had transitioned into a woman that was not actually accurate information. We don't know at this current time what the motivation was, um, what was going on. Um, ultimately, it doesn't, I mean, it matters because we always want to know that, but it doesn't matter at the same time because we're not here defending this person. This person obviously was a horrible individual to do this, and I have no problem saying that there are terrible, terrible trans people out there, just like there are terrible, terrible cis people. Because if you notice, when I was referring to trans people and cis people, there's one word that they all have in common. People. They're all humans, and humans have a tendency to do shitty things, regardless of their background, regardless of if they're cis or trans, gay or straight, Christian or atheist, or more appropriately, the dichotomy would be theist and atheist. Um, but, you know, it happens. But here's another part of the problem with it. They're saying it's inappropriate because this trans person committed a crime and took people's lives. So, we shouldn't have drag. First of all, the person who did this was not a drag performer. Not by any reports I've seen. And trans and drag are not the same thing, once again. Number two, how many times did we say that no cisgender man should perform on a stage because we've had a cisgender man who committed a crime. If we did that, cis, straight, white men, cisgender men, would never be allowed to be ever on a public platform ever again. It's a stupid argument, and here's the other thing. It's a dishonest argument. If there was no problem with, let's, let's even go with the drag queen narrative, fine. If there was no problem with drag queens prior, and now they're upset that a drag queen is performing immediately after, that might be an argument. It would still be a very flawed and ignorant one. They were passing these laws well before the Nashville shooting happened. So trying to act like it's in response to that is largely bullshit. So we know that. Well, I hope everybody's having a happy Easter Sunday. Um, boy, they hard after me. I woke up this morning, and I guess TikTok's going there and taking down my bio. The only thing I had in there was just saying my music on all digital outlets. And they said it just temporary, but we'll see. I'll get it figured out. You know, the whole thing about this woke agenda is they can shove it in your face and down your throat and expect you not to say anything about it. But as soon as you do, they want to get butt hurt if you don't go along with it. Well, I'm over it. We need to take a stand and stand together. You know, think about, i seen in some of these comments where people are like, well, what's it to you? What's it hurting you? We've got to be the laughing stock of the world. You know, think about the next generation. What are they going to have to grow up in? You know, a clown show? Give me a break. Stay strong and let's stand together. Okay, so now we immediately go into the poor, victimized, cis, straight, white uh, man. So... I'm not really buying this victimization bull. I mean, number one, no one has more power in this country than people like this gentleman talking. Um, and I'm not just picking on him. This is representative of what's going on in the Republican Party. Um, talking about we've got a band together. They're already doing that. They're controlling state legislatures. They're not banding together in order to fight some good fight of, you know, just letting people live their lives. They're literally coming against the ability of people to just live their lives. So, this whole argument that we're the ones changing things, the only thing we're changing is to make it so that everyone is able to live their lives free and open um, and, 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 and free of harassment and legal discrimination. No one is saying that people like this gentleman have to like us. 
I don't care if you like me or if you hate me. That is not something that keeps me up at night. What I'm talking about is my legal rights. You know, we never, you know, it's just like when we talk about issues surrounding um, segregation and racism, you know, it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't that activists during the Civil Rights Movement thought they were going to suddenly make white people not racist. It's about taking away the protection that comes with the power of their racism. It's about taking away their transphobic privilege to lord their bigotry over the rest of us. So, I am not a big like fan of CMT Music Awards. Um, Kelsey Ballerini is another one that I honestly had to look up who she was. I hadn't heard of her before. Um, because I haven't listened to, like, country radio in a long time. I listened to some older country that I grew up with. Uh, but that's about it. So I wasn't familiar with the name. Uh, but this idea that um, their values are under attack, they aren't. Your values allow you to live your life as you see fit, within reason of causing harm um, to others. Um, it does not allow you to force others to live their li to live their lives as you see fit. You know, he's talking about the kids and this being on CMT on the Music Awards, and uh, maybe it was in this video. If not, it was in another another one that I saw out there talking about this being a a family time thing. Listen, guys, the most amazing thing about television is you can change the channel if you don't like. A performance, you can change a channel. If you don't want to support Bud Light, Budweiser, you have the option to drink some other piss beer. Sorry, I'm not a beer fan. Um, but you can switch. It's not that big of a deal. The difference is, yes, you can do that. What you should not have the right to do is take away someone else's civil rights to say that if you're out here in drag then we're going to get you for indecent exposure to a minor. No. No, because drag laws, even though they'll say in a lot of cases when they're talking about drag, well, we're talking about drag. We're not talking about trans people. This has nothing to do with them. I agree it shouldn't. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't stand with drag queens, because I sure as fuck will. But the problem is, how do they define drag? So, in their case, they would say, basically, I mean, I, I, the bills do various things, but in general, they would see drag as a man dressing up in women's clothing. Okay? How do they define you as a trans woman? Think about that for a moment, and then tell me that they won't apply those drag laws to us they will. So, um, this whole fake outrage machine, it's another n another symptom of the spread of theocratic tyranny throughout the country. We've seen it in, in Tennessee, where a lot of this is kind of going. We've seen it in Texas and Florida, you know, Arkansas, numerous other states where this type of thing is going on. It's about theocracy, it's about taking over control, it's about forcing a version of their religious beliefs on the rest of us, and it's going to have to be about our willingness to fight back. We will not win this battle by sitting on our hands. They're talking about how they've all got to join together. That's disturbing, but it's also smart. The same has to be true of LGBT people and our allies. We have to stand together. We have to say no hate in our state. We have to be prepared the way that they were in Tennessee with those youth that were there supporting their representatives and saying we demand common sense gun laws. Uh, we have to be prepared 
to protest, to get loud, to not be sweet and polite and try to fit into a societal expectation that we react in, in an appropriate manner. And I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm talking about legal protest, but I'm saying we don't go into this conversation of, with this mentality of, well, we each have different views. Clearly, we have different views. But let's be honest in what we're describing. One view says, let people have civil rights. Okay? The other view says, let my version of religion control every aspect of your life. From your reproductive health care decisions, to the way you present yourself into, in society, to whether or not you can be discriminated against and mistreated. I mean, every aspect, whether or not you can get married. Um, there is a, a very big difference. One is talking about civil rights. The other is talking about totalitarian tyranny. It is most definitely a different thing. We have to recognize that this is a real fight for the heart and soul of the country. And when I say that, I mean the spirit of democracy, the core of what it means to be a democratic society where we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And understanding that in the modern context of how we have seen that over time, that when we say men, we're talking about mankind not straight white cisgender men, equal, and all the rest of us subjugated below them. We've got to fight to make sure that's not the interpretation of all men are created equal that stands the test of time, but that all mankind is created equal is the way that we move forward. So again, thank you for joining me for this video. And hopefully you'll stick, you'll come back for another episode of The Trans Atheist. Click subscribe, leave me ideas for things that you feel I should respond to, and I'll be happy to put those on the list. I have other videos planned. I do these on my days off, so the schedule's kind of hit and miss, but you'll see them when you see them. Hit there for alerts, and it'll let you know when it comes up, and then I usually post it on my other social media, so... I'll see you again really soon. Until then, have a great day. Uh, lots of love. And, well, until the next video. Bye-bye.